I feel like the best thing about photography and videography for me nowadays <clears throat> is how much I've learned about it, how much I understand it now. And not to sound arrogant, it's more along the lines of the fact that I don't have to think about what lens I need to grab or which camera to take for which event or what gear to bring or even what f-stop to shoot at or what kind of lighting to bring or do I need a flash? Do I not need a flash? All those things took years to finally understand. And you know what? This camera right here, Fujifilm, X100F can do all of that and then some. Not to mention its uh, bigger brother, X100V, and one of the most popular cameras of today's day and age. But we'll start with this one here, the uh, X100F. And by the way, we're filming on Sony A6700 which is an amazing camera. A little quick backstory about this this guy right here. I picked it up on Facebook Marketplace. I ended up getting this camera a little bit below market, and we're not going to get into details, but this was my way of getting into the X100 series. It wasn't the V, and I really, really wanted the V, of course, and I couldn't find it. I didn't want to pay you know, double the market value for it, things like that. So I felt like I settled for the F. But as soon as I went out and started shooting with it, I f completely just instantly fell in love with it. Nowadays, I actually shoot this thing on one by one aspect ratio. And I have it set up pretty much permanently in a uh, like a black and white mode. So I have a little booklet. Since I have three Fuji cameras in total, I have different film simulations written down for different Fuji cameras. And the one I was talking about on the, on the X100F currently is this uh, Ilford HP5 Plus. And if anyone's interested, I have a couple of personal ones in here and most of these are from the internet. This camera is pretty much permanently set to black and white. I don't put any other film simulations on it. And I'm liking the Ilford over the Acros for now. But the Acros Plus R with that film simulation has so much character. I've probably taken one of my best photos with it. I made a, a leather strap. Peak Design little quick release anchors which is amazing the guy that sold me this camera gave me this little original fujifilm case i don't really use that i just use the bottom and i just cap this like that throw it in my bag and i'm good to go got my strap keeps the camera protected so i absolutely absolutely love this camera it has so much character it's so fun to take photos with and to be honest, guys, if you know what you're doing, if you understand photography, you could truly, truly, truly get some really nice images uh, with this camera. It, it could replace any professional Sony camera for the most part. You could even do weddings uh, with this. There are plenty of pictures online that have gotten sharp results using flash and knowing what you're doing, knowing, understanding your equipment, understanding the environment, what you're shooting and things like that. People have been known to get excellent results with this camera and it, it fits in your pocket. There's something about the build quality here. There's something about the lines, nostalgia. Most of it, for me, I, I would say it's nostalgic. Reminds me, of course, of older film cameras. I was born in the early 80s, and my mother and my grandmother spent uh, many years taking me to uh, studios, and uh, my mom was into photography, so I had access to her Nikon and a couple other uh, really cool uh, film cameras. So needless to say, when I got a little older, I started shooting film myself, and I've been taking photos as far back as I can remember. When I saw this and I learned about this, I must have this. I must have this type of form factor. 
and yes, internet, TikTok, hyped it up beyond imaginable. I I get it, but irrelevant. That that makes no difference to me. I I love the mechanical dials. I like how small it is. I like how how it's got some heft to it. There's really nothing negative I could say about this uh, little camera. And as a matter of fact, meanwhile, I've been shooting with this camera. I, in a way, wanted to keep the miles off of it and uh, take it out on a weekend kind of deal. But I did want a camera that's a little bit more modern with the same form factor, of course, the X or the X100V. Uh, with the uh, faster focusing and things like that. And that landed me on this brand new X100V that I've uh, I've taken about a thousand shots through it this, uh, as of now. Um, I picked this up a couple of months ago and there's quite a story behind it. But before we get into that, I wanted to show you guys what I've done to it so far. Uh, with these cameras, oh, and real quick before I get into this one, I. I totally forgot to mention so from the previous owner on x100 f you guys know i have my little <laughs> add and some scroll moments kicking in here and here's here comes another scroll moment i gotta clean this lens but uh, i'm so passionate about these things that i i just uh i, I get so excited and i want to tell you guys everything about it and then all these uh you got a story for everything of course because you know there's always a story but real quick uh two things so when i when i bought this you really it's supposed to just come with the lens up to here and there's like a little thread protector that goes on it that he did include with but uh, in order to weather seal it, you need this little guy. So it's a, it's a offset adapter that allows for the uh, inner lens to uh, move forward and backward as it's focusing without bottoming out. And it's a high quality UV filter, but in reality, it's not so much of a UV filter. It's more like a uh, lens protector and it does what it does is it weather seals the camera completely. Uh, I'm not sure if the X100F body is weather sealed. I believe it is, but correct me in the comments if it is not. Um, definitely the X100V is sealed, and putting that on it uh, completely weather seals it. Without it, you're still exposing the lens element. And uh, this little concoction was about, uh, he said, 150 euro, and he had this done in Germany. So this camera went with him to Germany. He's taken quite a bit of pictures there, and he had a local camera shop there install this, and that's where he bought it from. So, as a matter of fact, he, I believe, has has purchased this camera in Germany, in Frankfurt, if I'm not mistaken, on his trip. And then he had a shop install this in addition to buying this camera there. So this camera is actually from Germany, and I'm, I'm, I'm of course, in the United States. So that's a little bit of story. And then it, soon after that, it was taken to Africa. I want to say Kenya, but I might be way off here. But that's the first thing that came to my mind. So I believe that's where it was. He was doing some volunteer work. And this camera has traveled with him through Kenya and Frankfurt. Been to two of those places. And when I purchased it, it had 9,100 uh, shutter count. So a little bit shy of 10,000 shots. It gave me a few accessories. Uh, and that's that's where we're at with this X100F. Let's put that aside. And then here comes a crazy story uh, with this X100V. And before I get into that story, I wanted to go over the mods that I've done to this. The camera is pretty much stock. I've added a Hodge, 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 Hodge. I don't know how to pronounce this, but an adapter very similar to that one. I didn't want to spend no 150 euro. That's absolutely ridiculous. This thing cost, I believe, 20 bucks, maybe something like that, maybe even less. I bought it on Amazon. I believe it was actually less. It was like 12 bucks or something. Then I got this uh, this uh, Futasi Pro 1D wide band UV, 49 millimeter UV filter. And it's one of the only ones that I found that was silver. For some reason, I did not want a black UV filter or the black adapter. I wanted to keep everything silver. Moving on, I picked up this uh, walking weight black quarter 
strength uh, mist filter and it's also 49 millimeters and this thing screws on to right over that and what it does is it allows me to bloom out the uh, the lights or otherwise known as cine bloom filter this thing you put over it and you shoot different lights gas stations are uh, my favorite i like taking photos of empty gas stations at night so i put that filter on and i'll go out and i'll take some photos and it just really nicely diffuses all the lighting it creates this eerie kind of uh, horror movie effect look i guess uh, and I, I really like it that's something i always have in my bag with me and this guy was only i believe eight dollars and as a matter of fact quality wise it's better than some of the uh, 50 dollars tiffin filters so walking away absolutely highly recommended excellent quality i probably have like four of these different sizes for different uh, lenses and they, they've all been wonderful and they've all been well under 20 dollars all right let's talk about the straps so i knew that my x100 v was gonna stay in this configuration i didn't want to start swapping the straps or having the quick release or anything i wanted more of a permanent strap on this and uh, i've been really eyeing these rope straps they look really cool and they feel really cool and they're a little stretchy and they're they just feel really comfortable around your neck so i've always wanted one and this guy went on sale i believe it was like 10 bucks and i ended up picking it up on amazon couldn't be happier uh, when this leather fails i'm gonna kind of make my own leather i'm not sure the quality of this leather if it's good or bad but so far it's been it's been wonderful now moving on to the last mod that i've done is a limbs design case and this was kind of hard to find i found it on amazon i got it on sale it has a built-in aluminum cnc plate where you can open uh, this up take out your sd card take out the battery everything else you need quick access to it hasn't its tripod hole there now so you're not wearing out the one in the camera itself the threads in this takes all the beating and then it has a cutout for your microphone or speaker or whatever that is all right and this is nicely cut out so uh, it gives you more space or place to put your pinky so when you hold in this camera now you have a place for your pinky so you no longer need uh the thumb little thumb extension that i have on x 100 f that i forgot to go over so let's go back to that really quick so this little guy here uh helps your thumb but since i don't have a place for my pinky here uh and i also ended up doing the shutter button the little red thing it's i, I don't know i'm starting to not like it and i didn't do that on the x 100 v when i got into fuji this was kind of cool a lot of people had them online but the more i have it the less i like it and the more tacky it's starting to look and feel to me but the x 100 f will probably remain with that on there but on the v although i have an extra one i'm keeping it stock i also heard that it messes up it could potentially uh mess up your shutter button but i don't know just like with anything else you you know you got to be careful so this limbs design case italian leather fits like a glove amazingly well built and the cool part about it is that it has arca swiss mount so it legit will fit um, into any tripod and it's built in so all my tripods are arca swiss i i like that that's my favorite way of uh, running a tripod i don't see any sense of running anything else so having said that makes it very convenient if you ever want to use a tripod i don't have to screw anything into this or anything i just boom quick release screw it on attach it and you're good to go and typically i've yet to use a tripod with this camera um, but it's nicely built in and conspicuously built in. In this case, honestly, uh, I truly, for the price, couldn't be happier with it. Just kind of adds a really nice, elegant touch to the camera. <clears throat> Little story, when we went to get this, this younger guy sold it to me in a parking lot, and we met up somewhere an hour and a half out of my way and an hour and a half out of his way, so we split the difference. He sold it to me under market value, it was brand new, and as soon as he, and I'm gonna have to pretty much draw this. All right, so I'm gonna try to explain it how the parking lot was. So like my car, my forerunner was like this, I was with a buddy of mine, and we're gonna use, uh, 
we're gonna use this thing as like the guy that sold me the camera. So like he was already parked here. He was already there when I got there. I pulled up. We exchanged the cash and the camera. He pulled out and left. As soon as he pulled out, there was a, a lifted truck that pulled up like this and then another lifted truck that pulled up like this. And they were both dualies. They were both like, <laughs> they both four door, had a few people in each one. They both kept their vehicles running and there was no, even though we were in the shopping center, one, it was like in the, kind of in the middle of nowhere, but two, there was no stores except for like Petco. And it was way off to the side this way. So essentially they had no business. They, they weren't interested in Petco. They had no business being there. There was really no reason for them to be there. So then as soon, and I mean, as soon as I started backing out like this, this guy started backing out. And then when I was going like this, this guy started backing out. So he followed me out. This guy followed me out. And then I went like this and was leaving the, uh, the shopping center. And they both got behind one another, and I was like that. And I made five turns. I mean, five turns. And two of them, I broke a, pretty much like I went all the way from the left all the way to the right, like obnoxiously. And they did the same thing. So they followed me. They made exactly uh, five exact turns as I did. And then something made them drop off. So I don't know if they were trying to, like, steal this thing back or what they were trying to do. But, man, it was... It was quite an adventure, but I called Fuji, checked the serial number. Fortunately, it's not stolen or anything, and like, in that sense, it was good to go. It was a little scary to be put in that situation over a camera. I've bought a few things online before in the past. I uh, bought a lot of camera gear, secondhand, and barely used, brand new, whatever you name it, from people meeting up with people uh, off of Facebook Marketplace, and I've never, or even Craigslist, and I've never ever had any issues uh, or had anything like that even remotely close to to happen. Yeah, just be careful out there, guys. It was definitely a lesson learned. Um, I mean, as cool as this camera is, I don't think it's worth, you know, getting mugged over or getting robbed. This video is getting pretty long already, so there's my two stories about these two cameras. The X100F and the X100V. Between these two cameras, it really allows me to go back to how I used to shoot with my point and shoot, where I would come home and just create a folder on my uh, hard drive from the event that I went to that day and offload all the photos that I took that are already edited inside the camera using the Fuji film simulations. So I don't have to sit there and edit in Lightroom or in Capture One, which adds so much more time to my workflow, personal workflow. Of course, for my client work, that's a different story, but my personal workflow, these two cameras can produce professional work that looks as good as some of the Sony stuff, if not better in, in terms of character, and in some cases, even in terms of sharpness with the X100V's uh, new lens being extremely sharp. 23 millimeter, 35 millimeter on full frame equivalent, uh, focal length, absolutely perfect for just about everything. These cameras are absolutely amazing. Definitely worth picking up if you can get your hands on either one of these. I was personally expecting the V to be night and day different from the F, and it is better in almost every way, but not by so much that if you already have the F, you must run out and get the V. They're both excellent cameras. And if, like I said, if you understand your equipment and lighting um, and you have a little bit of patience, you'll do well with either one of these. Uh, and the X100V requires a little bit of patience as well. You guys let me know what your favorite Fujifilm camera is down in the comments section below, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.